gentlemen, the Colonel. Gentlemen, this is war, and war on the continent. The regiment has its sailing orders. We entrain at door for France. Upon you, gentlemen, depends the Scots tradition. You are the descendants of those Highland chieftains who rallied behind Wallace and who conquered under Bruce. Your forefathers rest their honor in your keeping. I know that you will preserve it with integrity. I know that you will not fail those faithful Highland men who look to your names for leadership. It would be idle for me to warn you that this will be no border skirmish. We go to meet highly trained, perfectly armed soldiers, the best organized army in the world. A European war promises to be long and bitter. It may not be given us to survive the victory. It will be our portion to show the way to the armies who will follow us. Scotland expects no more from you than your fathers always have given, that you will fight bravely for the honor of the Highlands, for the protection of your people, and for your loyalty to his majesty. The king! The king! The king. Marshal's compliments, sir. Will Captain King report at once? I respect to the field marshal. Captain King. Kindly report at Whitehall. Immediately? Immediately, sir.
Have a chair, King. Thank you, sir. You filled out in ten years. You are a slender subaltern when I visited your father's regiment in Peshawar. Tully seeking. Your permanent regiment is the Black Watch. For the, the past six years, you've been uh, attached to the Khyber Rifles. Yes, sir. You've spoken the Indian border dialects since boyhood. I was born there, sir. Pushtu, mm -hmm. Hindustani, and the rest, like a native? Yes, sir. Well, King, <clears throat> a very serious situation exists here. We are stripping India of troops for France, leaving the frontier weakly guarded. Holy war starting here in territory not under British rule would be ruinous. These hillmen have always been troublesome, but now we find they are led by some woman known as Yasmini. It appears she claims some mysterious origin. At any rate, she has such an extraordinary personality that she can sway these fanatics to hail her as their leader and obey her rule. They hail her as a goddess. Now, at any moment, she may lead her fanatical hordes down the Khyber Pass, which would give over our peaceful subjects of India to the horrors of a holy war. Thieves look to us for protection, and we won't let them down. Your mission will be to prevent that holy war. But, sir, I'm leaving tomorrow with the regiment for France. You're not leaving for France, King. You're leaving for India. Your mission is secret, so that you may not explain to anyone that you're not just slinking away, not even to your own brother officers. You're going under a cloud, alone. Don't ask this, sir. 
You know our family. There's been a king with a regiment in every war. Your father wouldn't have said that, King. He was a soldier, and he obeyed orders. Is this an order, sir? It's an order. I'm ready for duty, sir. Just in time for a dock and dollage. My request for reassignment to the Khyber Rifles has been approved, sir. Orders will be forwarded within an hour. Your request, King? My request, sir. Then you won't be going with the regiment tomorrow? No, sir. You're returning to India at this time, when your country has need of every trained man she has in France? I'm returning to India, sir. Oh. Sorry, King. A nice place, India, now that we're leaving for. Sing all Lang Syne. Yes, David, all Lang Syne. Good old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to Brother, aren't you going with us to France? No, laddie. I'm going to India. But why? I can't tell you. But you'll be the soldier of the family in this war, Malcolm. You'll do the fight. And you won't fail. I won't fail. Good boy. Go inside, laddie. Join your pal.
the loo. Do not forget you're a McTavish, Sandy, and your wife is a McNab. Aye. Eh, uh, and Sandy, when you get to ken the parish fuzzies, do not forget you're a married man. Aye. Eh, uh, and the watch for when you sit doon to go doon your kilt. Do not forget you're a member of the church and hide your shame. Look, okay. aye. Eh, uh, and do not forget to give your rum ration to some wee bit drinking lad that needs it. Aye, Jerry. I'll give it to the first wee drinking lad that needs it. Worse than the McDavish. You'd be uh, as well. Dar. Now go over back to your mother. She's waiting on you. And give her this kiss for me. Aye, Sergeant. Being a bachelor, you'll ken that a wee bit of war is a grand relief to a married man. Oh, hi. Dark fellow. All present and in train, sir. Very good. I wish you very good luck, Colonel. Thank you. Goodbye.
I have displayed toward my fellow men. Allah, forgive me. King Sahib. Mohammed Khan. You're the last man I expected to see in India. I thought you were in France with your lance. The Raj deems me too old. I, who first rode in battle behind thy father 40 years ago. But King Sahib, why art thou not with thy Scot? You and I have been shunted from the real show in Flanders, Mohammed. But there's a soldier's job in India for both of us. King Sahib. There'll be no glory in it. You'll not be riding at the head of a hundred lancers. No pennons flying. No pipes playing. Dirty job. At the best. Do you want to come along? King Sahib, I have eaten thy salt and thy father's salt.
Here comes that drunken swine, Captain King. On hand as usual for his evening's whiskey swilling. By Jove, he'll drink himself out of the service. Yes, India's full of such rotters since the war. Well, slacking is bad enough without fraternizing with these scurvy natives. And the scurvy native you refer to is Resaldar Major Mohammed Khan, who holds the highest rank possible in His Majesty's army. A gallant soldier and a gentleman. Good day, sir. <laughs> the general seems in a bit of a huff. But you notice he didn't have a good word to say for King, though. No. How are you, old chap? Boy, about a peg whiskey, soda. My country has kept its promise. Vast stores of ammunition have reached the hills. Arrange for our departure shortly. For a week past, Captain King has looked often at my window. Thou shalt bring him to my house. You are in danger here, Yasmini. It is safer in the hills among your tribesmen. Safer for thee, Rewagunda. The British have no love for a native conspiring against them. Everything is in readiness. Munitions, guns, your men. An empire is at stake. Thou shalt have princely power in good time. Bring Captain King to me. I, I say, you fellows, I've just heard the most ripping story. <laughs> it concerns two Irishmen, Pat and Mike. Oh, no, don't go away. <laughs> or rather, I should say, Patrick and Michael. They were doing something. <laughs> I forget the, what they were doing, but uh, one said to the other, Begora, I... Excuse me, old chap. I've got a lot to do. I must go home. Excuse me.
say, I, I've just heard the most ripping story. <laughs> it concerns two Irish. Some other time, old chap. Boy, two whiskies and soda. I'm not drinking with you. I didn't ask for whiskey and soda for two. I said two whiskies and soda. It's uh, very much like the. Uh, oh. <clears throat> Yes, we have some quite dull evenings here, Times. I'd be very glad if you would come along sometime. Thank you. We have uh, all sorts of social and uh, sometimes regimental. Uh, if oh, your pardon, Reva Gonga, but I was distracted by Captain King's drinking again. Unfortunate. Ah, oh, he should be in India at this time. Wasn't he with a Scots regiment when war broke out? In this case, the war office may have its own very good reasons for transfer, Rewa Gonga. Hmm. I don't presume to know. Quite so. I say, King, <laughs> that reminds me of a ripping story <laughs> about two blackamoors, Sambo and Topsy. <laughs> oh, keep your beastly story. Eddie, your... Eddie, gentlemen, you gentlemen, please. Me. Really? Well, you're a drunken bounder. Why? You're the worst boy in the world. Listen, listen, King. And a cad besides. Yes, yes and you're a nasty, right. filthy, drunken swine. Fine. Listen. Oh, listen, listen. Colonel McDonnell. Uh, what is the meaning of this disgraceful conduct? Place Captain King under arrest. And have him report to my office immediately. Yes, sir. Captain King. Follow me. Paul must have fractured his skull, sir. He's dead. Awkward mess. Bravo, Gaga. Some awkward thing, yeah. Well, well, terrible. Out of the house of the club. I understand. One expects such outbursts from the virile European. This is a very serious business. I feel very sorry for Captain King. Oh, save your regrets. At last the service has the chance of getting rid of a bounder. Excuse me. Certainly. All right. I'll see this fellow. <coughs> That'll be all, men. You may go. Hurry! Find out! Now you understand, Doctor. Neither now nor ever may you disclose what has transpired. I understand, sir. Neither now nor ever. Yes, sir. And thank you for your help in the matter, too, Doc. <laughs> A capital bit of acting, Gene. Most convincing. <laughs> 
but far too realistic, sir. <laughs> that punch almost fractured my jaw. Mm. Sorry, old man. Uh, incidentally, Twines, uh, you will be buried with full military honors tomorrow. Uh, for the benefit of Yasmini's agents. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't attend your funeral, old chap. <laughs> now, gentlemen, we've no time to waste. Is Ray Waganga convinced I'm a renegade, sir? Without a doubt. Then he rushed the news to Yasmini. Yasmini is a woman inflamed with power. Uh, you must realize, King, that the fanatical natives regard her as a goddess, a native Joan of Arc. Well, not quite saintly, though. A parcel to stall with men. Uh, if you should win her interest, King, she has already shown interest, sir. But I don't like the idea of hiding behind a woman's skirt. Oh, forget your schoolboy scruples. This is war. The Yasmini is our enemy. She threatens the country with disaster. If her favor can further your mission, don't hesitate to use it. This is the dirtiest job I've ever tackled. But I'll see it through, sir. Good. Now, when you get to the hills, you'll destroy their ammunition dump. Your job is to rob Yasmini of her power. And if I fail, sir, others will follow you. Others have been before and never returned. Oh, by the way, the last was your old chum, McGregor. The best of luck, old man. Thanks. Uh, Rasul Al Major Muhammad Khan will meet you with a detail of lances in the Khyber. Number one and all. Well. The guard has full instructions. Thou art a fugitive now, Captain King? A fugitive and a murderer. I carry the news. I must get out of India at once. They're yapping at my heels. One can leave India, even now. Yes, Minnie. Thou art mad. He is no son of the prophet. 
I command you. Command? Thou couldst find riches and glory in my service. In your service, even death. But it is not wise to lead an infidel among the faithful. Infidel or not, mine eyes have marked him for my service. Mine eyes rove more than becomes our goddess. A caravan travels through the Khyber Pass tonight by a secret route. Thou wilt join it. King. In the hills, much will be revealed to thee. You will meet many like yourself in the hills. Captain King, soldiers, deserters, who fled after the climax of a blood feud, those whom the British call murderers. from your brother, King? Not a word. Well, don't worry. He couldn't be in a safer place than India. If you don't stop your slurs on Donald, I'll kill you. Laddie, I... laddie. Oh. Laddie. I swear I will. My brother is not a slacker. He, he wouldn't fail me. He couldn't. Steady, laddie, steady. You're needing a rest, I'm but, thinking. But Donald is not a slacker. Of course he is. You don't think my brother would... Wherever your in. brother is, he's doing his job. Oh, far down, laddie. Have a fag. I'm sorry, kid. Cigarette, Jock?
We are for the hills and for her service. What seek ye in her service? A mullah passing through our village promised us fighting and much loot in the holy war. What proof have ye of thy right to aid? We have the tunic, belt, and the pistol of a British officer, Saeed, whom we have slain this night. Ye are for the hills. The way to the cave is there. But be warned, not all who enter will return by this road. Who are those men opening that door on this terrible thing? British soldiers, Sahib, and loyal subjects of the Raj, who have been taken prisoner. And cow! All Europe's at war. Your regiment is in France. I'll get you out. Somehow. Never mind me. You carry on. Carry on.
Get the issue ready. Kill the unbeliever wheresoever thou shalt find them. Make them prisoners and despoil them. For whosoever shall fight for the religion of Allah, whether he be slain or be victorious, we shall surely give him a great reward. Why, you yourself stand sponsor for me, Karim Bey. Nay, I know nothing of thy worthiness. We must have proof. <laughs> for him? It is an order. But has it not always been our custom here for all newcomers to test their strength? Uh, will you wrestle for our sport? <laughs> Oh, the beer. He knows where the ammunition is, 
Saeed. We'll get him. Saeed. You have many wishes to see you. Ready. Aye, Saeed. Allow me to show you the way, Captain King. Thank you, Ray Waganga. Take your squad. Release the prisoners. Bring McGregor, Saeed, to me. Saeed. We follow bull with a deer. Beard, where is the ammunition thou promised us? There is no ammunition. I'll have thee hanged. I long have I desired to trim thy glorious beard, Harim Bay. Thou dog! I'll have thee boiled in oil. Oil? Oil, sire. What a glorious travels I have ne'er beheld. So glorious, gorgeous, beard as thine. I think it would look better curl. Where is the ammunition? The ammunition is there. Now we can talk, we three, of glory, wealth, and power. I prefer to talk of something else. Something else? I thought. We were going to talk of conquest with the wild tribesmen pouring over defenseless India behind their goddess. Seems their goddess is only a woman. Still a goddess to them, they were going to. They would tear any man, limb from limb, like man. So we are to lose an empire for a woman's desire. Still an untutored boy. Come closer. The women of the Western world have taught thee poorly. The 
sign of the faithful is not needed with me. I summon thee, Captain King, because Aryan blood flows in my veins as in thine. A white woman in these hills? Yes, Captain King. A white woman. Into this land Alexander the Great led a mighty army countless ages ago and took a wife from these northern hills. From him, I am descended. I remember one of those early invasions of India that failed. There is a prophecy that when a woman of Alexander's line shall find a mate ordained to rule these tribesmen, that conquest shall be fulfilled. So that is the reason these hillmen acclaim you as their goddess. I have looked long for that mate who would fulfill the prophecy? A leader, strong, brave, white. Allah has marked thee for that glory. Lonely, Captain King, for I am a woman. It is not good to be a goddess when one is young, cold, chaste, and far off. Sweeter to be a woman to one man than a goddess to thousands. It can't be. Men have forgotten before. Anthony squandered an empire for Cleopatra's favor. Am I less precious to thee than she was in his arms? You don't understand. Since I saw thee first neath my window in the shower, mine eyes have longed for thee.
And guard them well. Alarm! Guard! Alarm! Guard! Alarm! For all the violence I have displayed toward my fellow men, Allah, forgive me. We ride down the Khyber at the head of my hill, men. Together. To win an empire by the door. I will go with you, follow you, anywhere. But we can't turn those wild tribesmen loose to ravish a peaceful country. It only means killing, needless cruelty. Empires are not won by mercy, Donald. The thought of such conquest is madness. It is wisdom. Now is the appointed time. Europe is destroying herself, as the prophecy foretold. Her best sons are dying like flies. I have seen it. I will show you. Look. Hold my hand. Tightly. Concentrate. Think of those men you used to know. Unfortunate being mowed down in the mud of Flanders. Think. Think of those men. Think. Very well, eh, sir? Quite all right. Carry on. Very good, sir.
Malcolm, are you hard hit, Larry? Malcolm, lad. That was my regiment, the Black Watch. My brother is wounded, perhaps dead. And I've been lying here forgetting everything. Duty, honor, loyalty, faithless to my trust. Donald, am I not thine, and art thou not mine? I was sent here to betray you, rob you of your power, to prevent this holy war. Thy mission was known to me, but it mattered not, for Allah sent thee to me. It can't be. Thou art but one man against these merciless thousands. Everything's in readiness, Saeed. We found the guns and ammunition. Good. McGregor? Had been freed, Saeed. Splendid. We stole it from thy quarters, Saeed. Thank you. Now everybody's at the top of the steps now. Hurry! Guns in position. Release the prisoner. You take the right. The left. Now, center. Are you ready? For all the violence I have displayed toward my fellow man. <coughs> Allah, forgive me. Machine guns are in position. It would mean needless slaughter to oppose us now. You can prevent it. At your bidding, your hillmen would lay down their arms and disperse. Will you give the word? Thou hast triumphed.
Stand fast, Mac. You're in charge now. Stand up. Bear it, Father. On guard. Mohammed, send one of your men to the general officer commanding Northwest Frontier. Have him deliver this message. The job is finished. King. Sorry. Gentlemen, the Colonel. Gentlemen, it's but a few minutes midnight. The beginning of a new year. The hour for renewing old friendships and repledging ancient loyalties. During the long, relentless months of war, the regiment has upheld the bravest traditions of our country. I salute you, gentlemen, on behalf of those Highland chieftains whose honor you have so ably preserved, and for your loyalty to his majesty, the king. The king! The king!
Good evening, sir. Good evening. My request for reassignment to the Black Watch has been approved. I'm reporting for duty, sir. The latest Gazette has news of interest for you, gentlemen. Major King, the Black Watch, has been awarded the DSO for gallant service to the Crown in India. Glad you're back, King. Thank you. Congratulations. David, do you feel equal to it? Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all acquaintance be forgot in the day?